So the question you see belongs to chapter wave optics from the topic Young's double slit experiment. In a Young's double slit experiment, the slit separation is D, which is 0.3 mm, and the screen distance capital D is 1 meter. A parallel beam of light of wavelength 600 nanometers is incident on the slits at an angle of alpha as shown in the figure. On the screen, the point O is equidistant from the slits and the distance PO is 11 mm. Which of the following statement is or are correct? So when you see the diagram here, this is the case. These are the light rays which are coming and this is the P point which we are talking about and this distance is given to us as 11 mm, right? And this distance is given to us as 0.3 millimeter. Now, the most important point is to calculate that among the following options which is correct and what options tell us is that if alpha is this, destructive interference will be at point P or if alpha is 0, what will be the destructive or constructive interference in P. So basically we need to understand that under what condition, what interference will happen, destructive or constructive. So let's take the very first instance, let's talk about point P here. Now when you talk about point P, first you need to understand what is the path difference between the two light rays. So if I draw a perpendicular line here, right? and a perpendicular line here. So, what I'll get is this as delta x1, which would be equal to d sine of alpha. And this here, I will get as delta x2. This will be equal to d sine of theta. Now, where are these theta and alpha? Basically, when you understand that the light rays are coming like this, and then they move like this in this manner. So, the angles we are talking about is this as alpha and this as theta, right? So, what is the part difference between the two light rays? Definitely, it would be the sum of delta x1 and delta x2. So, putting the values down, what you will get is solution for point P, point P part difference will be equal to simply delta x1 plus delta x2 that is equals to d sine of alpha plus d sine of theta right now since the angles are very small i can easily write that delta x will be equal to d alpha plus d theta now, when you talk about alpha, alpha value is given to us as 0.36 by pi degrees and that has to be converted into radians. So, it would be like this in radians, right? Now, when you talk about theta, theta will be nearly equal to tan theta. That will be equal to y by capital D. What is the value of y given to us? 11 millimeters. And what is the value of D? 1 meters. So, when you put down both these values in this equation where D is already known to us as 0.3 millimeter, what you will get here delta X as D alpha plus Y by D. Just put down the values, it would be 3900 nanometers, right? Now, if you want to have the destructive interference, the condition for that would be 2n minus 1 lambda by 2. If you get n as a whole number here, then definitely it will be a destructive interference. Put the value of lambda as 600 nanometers. Putting the value lambda of 600 nanometers, you will find that n is equals to 7. That means at P, destructive interference will happen. Right? So, if you see at the first point, the very first point, that is for alpha of this value, destructive interference at point P, yes, it will happen. Now, let's talk about the second one. Fringe spacing depends on alpha. No, it does not depend on alpha. It depends on small d, capital D and lambda. When you talk about alpha is equal to 0. So, in this case, let's put alpha equals to 0. What we will get? For the same formula, that is case C, if you talk about option C, Delta X that was equals to D alpha plus D Y by capital D instead of theta I am writing this. If alpha becomes 0, delta X will remain only as D Y by capital D. That would be 3300 nanometers. Now for constructive interference, delta X should be equal to N lambda. 
that is equals to 3300 nanometers if constructive interference is there and should come as a whole number let's see which is the possibility here so when you calculate you will find that lambda is given as 600 nanometers you will find n is equals to 33 by 6 which is not in whole numbers so at p you will not find constructive interference in this case so the option c which we are talking about is also not possible now let's talk about d if you see for this alpha the part difference at o would be equal to 1 lambda as we have already calculated it is 6 into 10 to the power minus 7 meters and under that condition it will lead to formation of constructive interference so at point o for such condition destructive interference will not happen so among the four options only option a is correct so the right answer for this question would be option a i hope you have understood the question very well now let's move on to our next question